Hey, how's it going? You want to see what I'm looking at? Damn right. Ready to race? Fuck yeah, I am. Let's get cracking. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So what am I sat on top? I am sat on top a KTM 790 Duke, new for this year. Now I assumed as the 690 was a single that they just upped the capacity and made this thing a big fat single cylinder 790cc. I was wrong. It is a parallel twin liquid cooled. 799cc engine and it is really really smooth with a very satisfying throb you can actually feel the pulses of the engine as it gets up to speed if it was too smooth it might be a little bit bland and it's not hello open roads <laughs> oh yes so KTM 790 Duke did I enjoy it yeah all right, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Nah. <laughs> I have to break down a few of the reasons that I liked it. Uh, but to give you a little bit of a backstory, of course, a few weeks ago, I took out the Triumph Street Triple and the KTM 790 Duke. Now, of course, I've done a comparison between the Street Triple and the KTM. That is in a separate video. If you want to see them against each other, then feel free. But I am just going to focus on the KTM this time. I'll tell you for what, this thing does not handle like any parallel twin I've ridden before. So, so smooth. All the way. Genuinely all the way. Some nice cars around here. So to focus solely on the stats for this particular bike, starting with the engine, we have a parallel twin, liquid cooled, 799cc engine. It is a relatively free revving parallel twin. It is also surprisingly powerful for that particular engine setup. We have 105 brake horsepower at 9,000 revs and 64 foot-pounds of torque at 8,000 revs. Top speed of roughly 135 miles an hour, not 60 of God knows what, around three seconds. It's very quick. On the street, this thing is probably about as quick as you need. You couldn't be going much faster and actually in much more comfort. For a street bike, the riding position, the seat, and it's not the comfort seat, it's all very comfortable. This is a nice place to be. Pretty standard for length, pretty standard for height, 825 millimeter seat height, but you can get a lower seat and you can drop the frame as well. So you actually can make this thing or tailor make it to your own specifications if you are a little bit shorter. I wouldn't worry too much about that because although it's sort of tall, 825 millimeters is millimeters, is fairly tall. It has a very narrow seat, which means that you can very easily flat foot, or at least I could, at five foot 10, just in case you're wondering. No, scratch that, five foot 11, five foot 11. Don't break out the tape measure. It's also, it's also very light, really light. You can throw this thing around. And 825 millimeters is fine, I can flat foot really easy. Nice narrow seat, but it's not too narrow and it's not too uncomfortable. Quality machine, quality. The weight to dry is 169 kilograms. Don't know wet. I'm gonna guess 189, roughly, add 20. As always, you can pretty much ignore whatever the manufacturer says about weight. To the feel of it, while I was trying to shift that thing around stationary, it is extremely light. Now I've said on a few other bikes they're quite light, but this one genuinely took me by surprise. Let's talk brakes. Front brakes, we have dual 300 millimeter discs. We have radial mounted four piston KTM calipers. Fairly no frills for the brand, but they do a good job. Rear brake, 240 millimeter disc and a one piston, again, KTM caliper. And again, it works just fine. More powerful than perhaps I was expecting. Possibly that is because of the low weight. You can feel the rear end squat down just a little bit when you do throttle on. Suspension front and back by WP. Adjustability none, or at least on the front. On the back, of course, you have preload, but that is it. Fairly no frills for the suspension then. However, it works really well doesn't have any adjustability, but it is set up pretty accurately, I have to say. It is a fraction on the soft side with a small caveat. It feels really poised and really precise. There is a nice and very distinct 
little hunker down from the bike when you decide to power on. If you really drop the throttle and raise those revs, then you'll find that the rear squats, which can be somewhat encouraging because it feels like you are really just getting tight in on that bike and powering off. I liked it a lot. Hopefully, you would too. But I don't know you, so maybe you wouldn't. I'm actually in street mode currently, because I'm on a street, not a track, not sport. I will change it. Apparently that's all of the power, but a little bit less immediate on the throttle. Saying that, I would quite like to check the other modes. So we're now in sport mode, and it's a good timing too, because I'm stuck behind three things, one of which is a lorry. Four things, four things, one of which is a lorry. This thing basically has more electronics than I will have time to go into or test. But it's nice to know that they are there. It also has lean sensitive traction control. If you drop in a little bit too much, you start to lose traction, it will save you. You've got to be a little bit more sensitive with the throttle when you have it in sport mode because minor adjustments obviously shake it. So if it's a particularly bad road and it's just jerking you around, then you might want to stick it in street instead. It doesn't do a bad job though, and if you're pretty used to it, then there's no problem. Trickery and mod cons, this thing has the lot. The lot, the lot. KTM don't tend to skimp on their electronics. It of course has a color TFT display. It of course has rider modes. It of course has traction control and ABS. And being KTM, they have obviously taken into account the fact that people might want supermoto mode. Supermoto mode essentially means that you can turn off the ABS on the rear brake. I did play with the rider modes, they work very well. They have street, sport and rain and then of course a user mode as well so you've got four different options there. Rain clearly I did not use, street was fine and sport was just a little bit more immediate. It did do its job quite nicely. You get the same amount of power, so I'm told, from street as you do from sport. As I say, all it really adjusts is kind of your throttle control and how sensitive that is. Now it's not too sensitive, although if you do go over some kind of rough terrain, you'll probably want it in street, so it just softens off just a little bit. Gear changes are pretty goddamn smooth. Effortless, you don't even feel it. That is one of the lightest gear shifters. Oh yeah, because it's got a quick shifter. <laughs> you fucking plank. <laughs> uh, I forgot that. I did forget. Why have I even got a clutch? It also has a quick shifter for up and down. Quick shifter up works seamlessly. The gearbox is feather light on this bike. Quick shifter down, I didn't particularly enjoy, but maybe you do. Now, I realize that KTM also are aware of this. Not everyone enjoys using the quick shifter down, so they have made it able, or at least made you able, to switch off the quick shifter down. So you don't have to have that on. You can try and rev match it yourself if you enjoy that more, as I do. And then we have price, of course it is around £8,500 in the UK at the moment. It may well change in the future. It's a very accurate ride, very precise, even with the suspension which is not adjustable but they've got it pretty much right on the level. It has this real nice hunker down squat feeling when you accelerate. You give it gas and the rear just squats and propels you. So you know it's performing well. The quick shifter works well pretty much everywhere up. On the down changes, I'd probably still prefer to use clutch hand. The reason for that is that there is a little bit of a drop uh, or a, there's a bit of braking when you do change down gear too abruptly. So the problem is that if you're going around a corner and you try and have a cheeky gear change, then it's going to squat the front. So that would unnerve me a bit. But bearing in mind this thing has all the electronic trickery and gizmos that you can get, Everything you need to get you out of a slide beyond an unsavable accident, basically. So let's break down a little bit more of the character for this bike. Obviously, as I say, first and foremost, as far as the engine goes, it is a twin. Now, it is actually really powerful for a twin, and again, as I say, fairly free revving for a twin as well. It is also fairly mild-mannered in a town. A lot of people, or some people at least, have said that it doesn't work necessarily that well in a town. And whilst that is true sometimes of single cylinders especially, they just want to be going or stopping, generally, the twin, and with this one in particular, it is quite smooth. I don't feel like I needed to tease the clutch excessively. I felt like it could 
hold its own. It was settling quite readily in a town at uh, sort of standard revs. It's going around traffic perfectly fine as well. And the benefit that you'll get with this particular setup is that it's also really agile and fairly stable as well. So I would quite happily use this in town. The one thing I would say is though, it's gonna get nicked at some point. Not only is it bright orange, that stands out quite a lot. It's also fast as fuck. Chavs will know that. And Chavs will want to steal that so that they can also go fast as fuck. However, if you are worried about it getting stolen, KTM, of course, do offer their own alarm slash immobilizer. I wonder why they stuck that on their official KTM parts list. Probably because they're highly sought after by bike thieves. What do they call it? Not the scalpel. They said it's a precision tool. I think it was a scalpel carving through the countryside and I think that's quite appropriate actually. KTM have called this thing the scalpel and whilst that is cringeworthy as a title, it is also really, really accurate as this bike is. That's why it's called the scalpel because it carves accurately through the countryside. The handling on the thing is practically telepathic. The suspension, the feel, the setup is really intuitive and very confidence inspiring. Although it is on the softer side, they've somehow managed to get a balance between it feeling a little bit soft so that it's not jarring your bones, but not feeling like it's gonna wash out or feeling disconnected from the road. It genuinely is a triumph. No way, it's not, it's a KTM. It's genuinely very, very good. <laughs> it surprised me in the best way possible. The only thing I would say from it, and feel free, go ahead, berate me in the comments. I don't like the looks of this bike, personally. But, but, if like me, you have a little bit, a little bit of an issue with the looks of this bike, don't let that put you off buying one. Because trust me, it won't be around long enough for people to stare at it. It's not the kind of bike you leave sat up at the cafe. It's the kind of bike you wanna jump back on immediately and get back out and beat your personal best. I mean, really though, blinking you are at 60 miles an hour. It is, oh, what's the, I can't think of the best descriptive term for it. This is eight and a half thousand pounds well spent. That is what this bike is. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I will get back to you as soon as I can with the comments down there. And I will catch you in the very next video. Enjoy your week. Bye bye.